And joining us now on our Black History Month piece is Dr. Raymond Doswell, the Vice President of the Negro League Baseball Museum in Kansas City. And Dr. Doswell, thank you so much for joining us here. I just saw your presentation. It was uh, very, very excellent, and uh, I applaud you for it, and you know, keeping alive the memories of the Negro Leagues. Well, we're happy to do that, and St. Louis plays a very important part in that history as one of the major teams, the St. Louis Stars and the St. Louis Giants are one of the early teams, so we're happy to preserve that history both for St. Louis, Kansas City, and all over the country. We've done some Black History Month pieces over the year, and my first contact with the museum, Buck O'Neill answered the phone, and he recommended we talk to George Altman, and George gave us a tremendous interview. Uh, guys like Tom Maltzen, George Altman, they were just tremendous figures you know, in baseball for the Negro Leagues and in Major League Baseball. Well, folks like Mr. Austin and Mr. Altman certainly stand on the shoulders of many great baseball players before them. Uh, African Americans have been playing baseball since the late 1800s, and then, of course, development of the professional Negro Leagues paved the way for athletes like them to be able to have an opportunity to play. Now, yes, there was basketball and there was boxing and there were other opportunities, but thank goodness that the Negro Leagues existed so that they had an opportunity to apply their skills, and then we could still have have them available to play Major League Baseball later. You know, there was the barnstorming leagues like during the off season, you know, where the black teams would come in and, and play like the Yankees or the Cardinals. And the, the Negro League teams did pretty well, didn't they? They fared very well. They had a great record against uh, white baseball teams, and they were very popular. And, and not just on the major teams or against major players, but with a lot of different communities around the country, black and white. They were able to travel, for example, the Kansas City and St. Louis teams could travel all up and down each side of the state of Missouri and into Illinois and into Kansas. And they drew a great following among black and white fans, and they were very popular, and many folks remember them fondly. Negro League Baseball was one of the hugest businesses in the African-American community. So when integration occurred, actually it seems like a lot of the, the owners, you know, they were without teams shortly thereafter. So in one way, you're breaking ground in history, but then in another way, you know, a lot of black businesses folded. Negro Leagues and the demise of the Negro Leagues is bittersweet in that, yes, the Negro Leagues provided jobs, it provided opportunities both for athletes and for folks in the community, yet it was still separate, it was segregated, and the fact of that is still wrong. And so, uh, as one of uh, the commentators in one of our films says, they were so good they put themselves out of business because it became just too apparent that these black athletes had to have an opportunity to play Major League Baseball, and Major League Baseball was naive if they didn't try to recruit those players to come in. And yes, it was bittersweet because we eventually lost the Negro Leagues, but in the end, uh, all fans got an opportunity to play with each other, uh, fans got to be with each other, and it was great. Speaking with Buck O'Neill, he was mentioning how uh, when the Negro Leagues were there, that things were separate. You know, you had to stay in different hotels, but there were some nice African-American hotels. There was some nice eateries as well, but once the uh, integration occurred, a lot of the African-American baseball players, you know, they couldn't eat with the teams, and, and sometimes they, when they traveled, they had issues and things like that. It was a struggle first uh, for a lot of players like Jackie Robinson and those who came from the Negro Leagues initially because the different laws in different places were not accepting of, of whites and blacks staying in the same accommodations or riding in the same accommodations. But it took baseball as a popular sport to break a lot of that down. And, and the baseball players, in many respects, were the ones who helped crack that door open for the rest of society. Jackie Robinson, in particular, was someone who fought very strongly against um, that injustice. And uh, in many respects, he became the first person to, to stay at certain hotels in certain communities and, and be able to dine in certain dining rooms. And they were very adamant about that. Uh, and thank goodness for it, because what that did was they could see that it was just stupid to have such rules. Uh, and that one, blacks and whites can play well on the, uh, in the arena, play on the playing field, they can communicate together, they can work together, and again, it opened the eyes of those who were just not progressive enough to think forward. When Jackie broke in, Larry Doby comes next, and then there's, a, you know, I don't want to say an onslaught, but then a lot of, uh, you know, Negro League players were making their way into the Major League Baseball. Uh, Tom Alston eventually was signed by the St. Louis Cardinals. And then in, in the late 50s, the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, there was a lot of African-American players in Major League Baseball, guys like Bob Gibson. But it seems like in today's age right now, uh, there's less 
black players than there were in what I think maybe in the 70s and 80s. And do you have an opinion why that might be? We get this question all the time. <laughs> and I don't have one answer. There are a lot of different answers to that. It was in the mid 80s, which where we had the peak of both African American and Latino players in in baseball, which is around 18% participation, and has been slowly going down ever since to where we're now down to about, it's been hovering between 8 and 7% over the, almost the last four or five years, uh, 8 and 10% over the last decade. Uh, there are a lot of factors in that uh, baseball uh, and other sports have, well, other sports have, in some respects have supplanted baseball as popularity in the community, but at the same time, baseball um, hasn't necessarily been supported uh, from the standpoint of schools and elementary schools and high schools for various reasons. Uh, there's less green space to be able to, to play baseball. And at least for the African American community, young people can just pick up a basketball and go practice. Whereas with baseball, you really need to have at least one partner to practice the game. But it's, it's something that's affected even the white community as well, where kids were playing other sports for a while, soccer and other sports. And it certainly continues to grow in the Latin American community. So I think what's in, what the more What's important to me is not so much that, although I'd like to see more African Americans play, and I think all those involved with baseball would like to see that, I want to make sure that if they can use baseball to get an education, become doctors, lawyers, and teachers if they want, and hopefully uh, if they want to be professional, then they have those opportunities. That means scholarships uh, at colleges. That means opportunities to play um, Little League and, and amateur baseball when possible. And Major League Baseball and many others are putting an investment in that because they recognize that the numbers are not where they want them to be, and they're pushing for that, and we want to support them in doing that. I tell you what, folks, when you're in Kansas City, do yourself a favor. You can hit some barbecue like Arthur Bryant's. I think that's what it's called. It's in walking distance to the Negro League Baseball Museum. So you can have a little Kansas City barbecue, walk on over to the Negro League Baseball Museum. That They're going to show you a film when you walk in. There's a loop uh, with Buck O'Neill comments on different TV shows. And, and uh, what else can you tell our viewers about the Negro League Baseball Museum and why they should come see you? Well, we want you to come, whether you're from St. Louis or from any kind of community where there were African Americans, they usually had a baseball team that was part of that, uh, and you will come and you'll learn all that history, the connections to broader African American history. And even if you're not a baseball fan, and in fact, it's those non-baseball fans that I really want to come, you'll get an understanding of what it was like to live during those times. And baseball is just one aspect of African American history that helped you know, paved the way for many other aspects of the civil rights movement. So you learn really what happened between the Civil War and the, and the beginnings of the civil rights movement, and baseball's kind of bridge through that story. So you come in, you'll see hundreds of photographs and artifacts and life-size bronze statues of some of the key players in Negro League's history. We have a store as well, and folks can come, they can support us through membership, they can get on our Facebook page, and yes, there's plenty of barbecue in Kansas City, and you, and, and you will have to walk it off when you come. <laughs> Dr. Doswell, thank you very much for joining us on STL TV. We appreciate it. Thank you.